buffers or pH stabilizers are at the heart of every biochemistry experiment. And, but how do they actually work? You can think of it kind of as giving and taking protons from a proton jar to maintain a constant pH. Let me explain. So super quick overview of pH and there's way more in other posts. But basically pH is a measure of the concentration of protons. And so protons are just H plus. So basically they're a hydrogen without its electrons. So that's why it's H plus. Um, and is, we can use that interchangeably with proton because hydrogen only has one proton and one electron. And so it loses that electron, now it's a proton. pH is a measure of how many protons are in a solution, like a concentration of protons in a solution. So you think it's kind of like a proton jar, jar, kind of like a cookie jar. And so how full this jar is, that's a measure of the pH, but it's an inverse log. So the more protons you have, the fuller this jar, the lower the pH and the more acidic. The um, less protons are in this jar, now I'm making the solution more basic, it's going to have a higher pH because it's a negative, or it's higher pH because it's an inverse log. And the log thing can get kind of confusing, but it allows us to work with like normal numbers like 1 to 10 ish instead of having to work with like oodles and oodles of giant numbers but because there's oodles and oodles of giant numbers of protons everywhere but so the amount the ph the and how full this proton jar is the concentration of protons is going to depend on how many acids and bases there are so how many acids things that add a proton and how many bases things that take out a proton there are things different strengths of acids and bases so strong acids are always if they cut if they have a, a proton they're always going to give it up weak um strong bases are always going to take a proton assuming that they can take a proton because here's the important thing when it comes now this base that has taken a proton now it's an acid it's its conjugate acid um and then we say that the base form so that we have conjugate base is going to take a proton conjugate acid can give a proton but if you have a strong acid or a base this means that its counterpart so the um the conjugate base of a strong acid is a super, super weak. And the conjugate acid of a strong base is super, super weak. And so we don't really have to worry about those influencing the pH after they've already deprotonated or protonated or whatever. And so they're not gonna be resistant to changes in the pH. They can't act as a buffer. But there are also weak acids and bases. Um, and so a weak acid has its conjugate base is going to be a weak base. And so, but so you can have a molecule that can both give and take protons. So it, it's active in both. It's like, it's, well, I mean, they're always active, but I mean, like it's physiologically relevant, active in both its acid and its base forms. And a buffer solution is where you have roughly equal concentrations of the acid and the base form. So of the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So I have about equal numbers of hands with the proton and hands without the proton. And so this means that if there's a change in, like an external change in the pH. So if there's another acid around there that drops a proton in here, so it drops a proton. Now our proton jar is more full, but we want to keep the proton jar lower. So now we can have a conjugate base come in and take that proton. And now you have, you're not changing the pH. You're not changing the level of protons in your jar. And um, on the other hand, if there's a base that comes by and it pulls out a proton, you still have plenty of that weak acid that can donate. But now my weak acid is its conjugate base. So you're like using up your stock. So if you go too far away from the ideal point in which you have an equal amount of acid and base, then you're out of the buffering zone. You can't keep the pH stable. So we can use this equation called the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to go back and forth between pH and pKa. And basically, the there's a value called a pKa, which is the point at which a molecule is like half as likely to be protonated or deprotonated. Or if you have like a bunch of the molecules, like half of it, a bunch of copies of this molecule, like half of it would be protonated and half of it would be deprotonated. And so this is the this is where we want things to be if we're making a buffer. So this is why for when we're making a buffer, we want the pH to be um, we want to use a buffer buffering agent that has so an acid that has a pKa 
around the pH that we're wanting to stabilize at. And we can tweak, we can add a little acid or base to try to um, tip the scales a little to get it to the exact pH we want, but we need to be in the buffering range, which is typically about like minus one to plus one around the pH pKa of the acid. And the reason why this is, is because according to that Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, if we go one, uh, a pH difference of one, because we have that log 10 thing, a pH difference of one is going to mean you have tenfold more of the acid or the base. So if you go up a pH, um, remember that means you're taking protons out, so you, more basic solution. Um, so if you go up in the pH, so there's less protons available, you're going to have a tenfold increase in the amount of base compared to the conjugate base compared to the acid if you were to go up one pH unit. If you were to go down one pH unit, you would go um, tenfold more of the acid form. So if you go in, so if you have tenfold more, you still have a, like appreciable amounts of both. But what if you go two, P, two pH units above? Now you have a hundredfold more. Three, you have a thousandfold more. And so you can easily see that you're going to be out of this buffering zone and you're not going to be able to buffer because if something comes in you don't have anything to add or take give or take or depending on what direction it is so to review ph is a measure of how full the proton jar is pka is a measure of how willing an acid is to give up its base so this uh to give up its proton and become its conjugate base weak acids are things that can both they have um they're weakly acidic and weakly basic because when they give up their proton, now they're it's conjugate base and it's they're going to be weak in both forms. So that just means that they can do both and they'll kind of readily do both. So if there's a change in the pH, like an external change, then it can counterbalance that change and keep the pH steady. However, and the reason why is because instead of having like a single molecule, so you might think, okay, well, it's given it up. Now it can't do anything, except you have lots and lots of copies of these. And so the idea with the, so there's other copies that have, um, are in the base, the, pro, the acid form or the base form. But when you have like a ton of them, you're going to have plenty. And so a buffer, a good buffer um, is at a pH where you have roughly equal amounts of both of these. And this is around the pKa of the acid. So the pKa is where you have equal amounts of the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So you have plenty that can give and plenty that can take in order to keep your proton level, your proton jar at the level where you want it. If you go too far away though, then you're going to get into that problem where you have like they've all given it up or they've all taken it and now you don't have the other form that can do what it needs to do to counterbalance the pH.